All right, I think we are live. Thanks for joining another Tuesday night gun chat. This is our live stream talk. And today, uh, Natchez Outdoors has uh, sent some stuff to keep the 308 project going. So make sure you go check out Natchez. Anyway, um, if you haven't seen one of these before, we, you just ask me your questions about guns. I give you my answers. They are worth exactly what you paid for them. Unless, of course, you give a super chat, in which case they're worth less than what you paid for them. And so on and so forth. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. I'm going to shout out the chat here in a minute. So I don't know you're here if you don't actually write and say hi and where you're from and all that kind of stuff. And we just talk about your questions. That's all we talk about. It's q and I may... <laughs> I may give you a great answer. I may not. So kind of is what it is. So anyway, guys, do that. Uh, don't forget that we are got some stuff from. Hold on. <laughs> got my thing playing through here. So make sure you go and check out all of our affiliate links. So and uh, check out our make sure you check out our arms directory page. I'm going to paste that in the chat right now. So go check out our arms directory page and all that jazz. All right. Well, it looks like we got 14 people in here so far. Not bad. All right. Joshua Grantland, some very kind words. The best part of my Tuesday nights while at work. There we go. I appreciate it, brother. All right. Hey, work hard, brother. Keep making that money. As long as that money is worth something. Last one, Andy, what's up? Scott Leeper, what's up? Hi, Chuck. What's up? Henry Singleton. It's been a while. You've been... You've been on the chat before, but it's been a while, hasn't it? All right. Welcome back, brother. Chris Heitzman. Very good. It's good to see you, brother. Good evening, Chuck. Good evening from North Idaho. Don't forget to go check out our uh, arms directory page. G23 is in here. Bam Zemoy, all the way from Finland. Plowhammer. Good to see you again. What is up, Alvaro? How you doing? All right. So, Avero, appreciate you being here. Okay. Got Hunter Kirk again. Kyle Loper, good evening. How you doing? First thing, is that the first time I've seen you in the chat? It's good to be here. David Martin, how, howdy from South Dakota. Get your gun questions in, and uh, let's make sure that we uh, answer them all, and uh, we'll uh, see how it's going. Uh, so, anyway, uh, Nicholas is here. David Posey is here. I got a lot more uh, blue wrenches out there because when I do the vertical live stream, it goes on the shorts feed and we get a lot of trolls. So, hey, Chuck from Georgia. Yeah, I am originally from Georgia. So it's been 10 and a half years since I've lived in Georgia. I have a brother that lives in Finland. There you go. All right. So, so questions for you guys. I got this uh, little Crimson Trace Red dot, what should I put it on? What do you think I should put it on? What gun, what thing should I put it on? I also did release a uh, video today. Hasn't got a lot of views, so I'm going to put it in the chat. I'd like to see the uh, the full, like, amount of views that uh, in, in there. So make sure you go do that. Now, G23, this thing's too cheap to put on a 270. Uh, or 270 is too bad to put this on. I hate I, I, y'all know I hate the 270. That was a good that was a good one, G23. I've only been able to make a couple of these. Glad I made this one. Thanks, Kyle, for showing up. I appreciate it. So again, if you're not familiar with uh, the format here, you ask your questions about guns. Anything you want to ask? Uh, if I know the answer, I'll give you the answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll say I don't know and then make up an answer. So that's basically what I do. Uh, and so get your questions going and uh you know it could be anything about you know inevitably we always talk about best bear defense guns but uh it could be reloading it could be shooting it could be new guns it could be old guns it can be whatever you want it to be so make sure you go check it out uh go check out uh today's video as well uh go hit the like and everything share over there so uh, i am putting out another video tomorrow which is unusual i know i don't usually put out two in a week but out another video tomorrow because i am edited ahead a little bit I've got, i'm a little bit ahead i got like five or six videos that i can throw out at any moment so 
<laughs> Nicholas, take the Lord. Someone else that hates the 270. Hey, I don't hate the 270. It's just like 30 on six for women. That's all, Nicholas. So, you know, that's what it's for, you know, anyway. So, have you used mandrel type dies for neck sizing? No, I don't neck size a full length resize. All right. I know a lot of people prefer the neck sizing. I do full length resizing. I, f I find in semi autos and in bolt actions, they feed better. So, you just get less hang ups if the brass is the right shape all the way down. You know, it makes sense that it came out of your gun, so you could just neck size, but it still also expands a little bit from heat and stuff like that. Reloading kits or individual equipment. If you're starting out, get a kit. If you know what you're doing and are re-going in, investing in it, do individual equipment. That's kind of how I did it this time. So, uh, kind of is what it is. That that would be that. Would be that. Uh, so, that's that. What powder is best for 165 to 180 grain and 308 Winchester? The best 308 Winchester from powder from 110 grain all the way up to at least 165 grain. I haven't tried it with 180s yet. Um, is TAC. All right. TAC. Ram shot TAC. That is the best powder for 308 Winchester, in my opinion. And I'm going to uh, load some 180s up there, too. Uh, you got some people saying Varget. All right. So there we go. All right. Hey, Chuck. Backfire is making a move back to the 6.8 Western. I wonder how much they paid him to do that. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. So uh, kind of is uh, is what it is there. But, uh, yeah, I, I still think the 6 West. I don't think even Backfire can say, but he's a good guy. So I've been told. He's got a great channel. Um, but I don't even think he can save it. Like, I don't even think he can save the 6-8 Western. Okay. Maybe you can get on his good side and just, you know, put hashtag save the 6-8 Western in all, all of the, all the comments. Like, here, here's what you got to do, Montana Musing. You got to get Federal and Hornady to produce ammo for it. Good hunting animal. In the 6-8 ammo, there's, in the 6-8 Western, there should be a Federal Terminal Ascent. There's a Federal Terminal Ascent. It'll be saved for about six months. Anyway, so... IMR, IMR what? IMR makes good powders, but they're not always the best powder for everything. Uh, 4064 is what my dad loved growing up. So, question is a great cartridge design, but poor execution. Yeah, they, they I agree with that. Um, just execution on the on the promotion of it, just the promotion side of it, you know, and the ammo side of it, you know. Until Hornady comes out with, uh, sorry, I got to pop my neck. Oh, man, there we go. Until Hornady comes out with something for it, you know, kind of is what it is. Any recommendations just on the AR-15 home defense ammo? Just picked up a 10.5 inch and can't figure out what direction to go. I would look uh, in a 10.5 inch. You're not going to get the velocities to really get something hard like TTSX to open up or TSX to open up. Uh, so I would look seriously into a, the 60 grain v max rail i would look at uh 60 grain v max maybe a 70 grain um uh nozzler ballistic tip uh, if such a thing exists i don't even know if that exists but i would look into the uh um the v, the v max you might try a 75 grain lrx uh i got a box to reload up there but i mean all that's reloading so um you know if you don't reload uh there are plenty of different 60 grain, like Ammo Inc. makes one, and uh, I think um, Agula makes one, and I think there's a few 60 grain VMAX loads out there. Hornady obviously makes one, it's their bullet. Um, so I think that's the way to go is the 60 grain VMAX for home defense. It's going to penetrate deep enough. Um, the bullet's not going so fast out of that barrel. You know, you can get it going 20 inch barrel, it's going 3,100, right? Or should be going 3,100. So, um, no, that's really crooked. Ooh, it's hard seeing yourself backwards here. Um, but anyway, so, all right. Don't forget to tell, check out Natchez. They're helping with the 308 project. Gonna straighten this hat here. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. All right. So, yeah, I would do that 60 good. So, 
Any update on where Winchester large primers and Alliant reloader powders are? I actually just got some reloader 22. I got two pounds of it the other day um, at Arctic Ammo and reloading. Uh, and I don't need it. I got a five pound jug from there last year and I haven't even opened that yet. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, anything else? No. Other powders and large primers are somewhat available. Yep. Somewhat. Yeah. But glad to see you're doing well. Looks like you're elbow deep in questions. I'm a huge, big fan of TAC, IMR4064, and Varget in the 308 semis for pig use. There you go. It's good. What do you think of the Vortex Venom? I'm looking at it for my six art gun. I am not a Vortex guy. Get whatever Leopold makes. So, yeah, get whatever Leopold makes. Thanks for the powder update, Chuck. Yeah, no problem. I mean, I'm not saying much. I actually emailed another company I work with, North North Fork Bullets. Um, they make some awesome bullets, and I emailed them, and uh, they're from Sweden, Alliant Powders from Sweden, and they don't even know any of the guys over at Alliant. So, yeah, I was like, you don't happen to know any of the guys over at Alliant, Alliant, and hook me up with some powder, you know, that kind of thing. Get I'll pay for it. Just get it on its way here. I don't care if it costs a hundred dollars a pound. I'll need some reloader 17 and 26, you know, and, uh, they couldn't help me. So you think 10 millimeters are arguably better than 357 Magnum? No, in hottest loads, 357 Magnum lens. Um, so like in the hottest loads in that Buffalo bore 180 grain, 10 millimeter versus or 180 grain, 357 Magnum versus, um, 220 grain, 10 millimeter on the bear hard cast ammo. 357 is definitely better. What is better, like the as far as more energy, the the caliber wins is 357 Magnum. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's getting more penetration, but like I think that uh, Jonathan, I think that uh, yeah, you you gotta be. What is the right word? What are we looking at here? You got to be more like, just like, is it about, can I shoot a 10 millimeter better? Do I, I have 15 rounds? You know, I have a quality gun, so I don't have to worry about jamming and I'm keeping it clean. All those things is where you really get into it. So, yeah, if you ever get a revolver, get it in 44 mag or 454 Casul. The only way, way, reason why I have a 357 Magnum is for the channel. But an RCBS die a month ago, or two ago, and the decapping pin bent and screwed up the whole die. Yeah, I've had that happen in RCBS and in uh, 480 dies. It happens. And most of the time it happens because there's something wrong with the primer. Or you accidentally get a Burdan primer in there and screw the whole thing up. Subending ballistics. I saw some Brinnickly slugs back on the shelf today. They were one ounce and didn't have the bear graphics. Do you think they will hold up for bear defense? Probably not. <coughs> Mm. 25 ACP is the supreme caliber. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's always one in the crowd. I have a Vortex Venom, and it's not good for anything other than bench shooting. It loses zero every time you bump it. Uh, hey, James, that might be your rings, too. That might be your rings. I have a Leopold 1 to 4 power scope on my AR that I've been using for 22 years. Love to. Loved on a few different rifles. Been underwater, under snow, crashed on snow machines, still held zero. There you go. Yep. Lived on a few different rifles. I could love on a few different rifles too, right? So, yeah. Um, man, a Leopold 1 to 4. Yeah, that's great. That's uh, I'm going to make an argument that LPVOs are... They originally started on dangerous game rifles. That's like like where the, where the tactical guys got it from was dangerous game rifles. They were like, oh, wow, that's that's a great idea. You need a one to five or one to six or one to four when the grizzly bear is 10 feet away and you're trying to get them in the scope. But you still need the four power for dialing it up at so many yards. So, like, yeah, is what it is. Rings are good. Check multiple times. There you go. Should have fill out a CAD report on uh, somebody doing animal abuse. Yeah, there we go. 25 HCP is a meme cartridge. There you go. Yeah, so, yeah, one of the floors, like, I'm actually going to take this uh, Arkin, and I think I'm going to put it on Chuk 7 PRC while I play with it a little bit. So, that's that.
Hey, what's up, Texas professor, Tex prof? How you doing? Um, rings, uh, Liverpool backcountry rings with a backcountry base. They work great for me. Uh, you're going to spend $150 on rings, but they work great. Um, I have no experience with tallies. I like a one piece base. Um, but I do like how the tallies, I, I have tallies on a new six, five Creedmoor that I bought from Chuke, the little Ruger, uh, um, Kimber Hunter, the little 20 inch Kimber Hunter. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, get, get Arkin instead of a Vortex. Yeah, I agree with that. hundred percent. Almost bought a Ruger Hawkeye 257 Rogerts, but can't find any ammo or brass. There you go. I got a fresh roadkill deal this Sunday. Haven't even entered Rigard Mortis yet. It's dead about 30 minutes. There you go. I'll probably do a short, Kyle. I'll do a short, how it holds up. But yeah, I'm going to put it on the 7 PRC. I'm going to put it on Chuke 7 PRC for a little while and uh, get that, uh, get it like that uh, on there. I've actually got some Arkin 34 millimeter rings to put on top of it. Um, the right on scope he has on there, just no eye relief and just bangs you right in the face every time. Like I had my hat on and I had my build down when I was shooting. So that it would hit the bill. And then I had my like my winter hat on overneath so that I had thick cloth on my skull right here. And I got hit a couple of times in that video. All right. It wasn't really there. So 16 thumbs ups. Woohoo. <laughs> Love your AR 15s, America. That is correct. We do. I don't know if you've done this test, Gore, but what 12 gauge slugs versus 4570 would be cool. Yes, I have. That's one of the most popular videos on my channel. And I need to do a backup one, a different one. So, need your thoughts on a on your go to bolt carrier group for a recce, a or SE AR. I would get a BCM. I would get a Bravo company. I've got links on my MeWe page and stuff to their stuff. Uh, they seem to make really good bolt carrier groups. Um, if it's uh, yeah, and they have some good recce uppers as well. So recce. For, the, uh, for those of you who don't, don't know what recce means, it's basically a reconnaissance uh, type thing. So I have not seen 257 lately. It's been a couple of years. There you go. Alaska one, Andy. Might, you might be able to buy some brass from him, Dusty Bowhunter. Y'all exchange emails or something. <laughs> what do you think about Remington Ammo? I haven't got to shoot it well. I well but i think it's the gun who do you has had good results with them um unless they've improved in the last couple of years their ammo has horrible standard deviations uh the core lock doesn't always lock and uh yeah so that's that now for pistol ammo just range stuff for nine millimeter yeah i go with whatever's cheapest at the store that's still reloadable so yeah go with that so i've never had a problem with their pistol ammo Think you can reshape and cut down thirty out six and two fifty seven robbers. That's the first I've heard of that, but cool. How tolerable will be a four sixty XVR be in a three point five inch barrel? Not very tolerable at all. Bring back the three seventy five win absolutely. Uh do people use six five Grindel in Alaska? Yes. Yes, it's it's used. Not much, but it's used. Anybody use 338 rifle ammo? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've got a whole series of videos on AD on my uh, 338 Win Mag. I got a whole series of videos. Uh, it, uh, everything from 160 grain TTSX to 225 the partitions, and I took a small grizzly bear with it. So. Huh. Cool. I never, did not know that. Cool. You learn something new every day. Thanks, Jonathan Rangel. Yep. Yeah, 338 went back here. It's the beast. Yep. Yes, it is. Uh, and I need Reloader 17 so I can uh, uh, make those 185 grams soar. So. Would you ever use a cup and core bullet for your Alaska hunts? Absolutely not. Not anymore. I've learned my lesson. Bonded. Or uh, or uh, bonded or monos, so yeah. 
A uh, little bit of both. Mostly stuff I've loaded myself. I've got a bunch of the factory PMC 308. Uh, I've got a bunch of factory PMC um, 556. Uh, and some uh, Federal American Eagle 556. But most of the stuff is the stuff I've loaded my own. Especially in 308. Also in 10 millimeter. Um, so, and also in 9 millimeter. I've got a lot of hollow points that I loaded myself. Um, but so, is what it is. That's a good question, though. Good knows probably one of the best AR-15. Yes, it is. It's definitely one of those. I thought so. There's a lot of 338 Lapua Remington Mag. Uh, yeah, Lapua Magnum. There's no Remington in there. But yeah, a lot of 338 Lapua is good stuff. All right. How are the Lee field rifle reload kits for a SHTF kit? I've I know people have used that and uh uh I don't know, but uh that is what it is. I also like factory PMC 223. Now if you get the 223 bronze, just know that 223 and 556 are loaded different and here's what how they're loaded different, okay? Uh they're loaded different. Uh there we go. I got finally got my hat straight. Uh they are loaded different uh because 556 NATO is designed to go 3,200 feet per second, 3,240 for a 55 grain bullet and 31 ish for a 62 grain bullet um, out of a 20 inch barrel AR. Whereas 223 is designed to go um, uh, out of a 22 or 24 inch barrel. And so the pressures aren't quite as high as they are in 5.56. So just I love the factory P223 uh, 223 ammo. I've got a whole box of, of just that brass over here to start reloading. And I'll tell you what, like, um, to me, like, you got to pack it hot uh, to the max to get any velocity in 223. So just understand, if you if you shoot that stuff over a chronograph, don't be surprised to see 2,800 out of a 16-inch barrel because it's designed for a 22 or 24-inch barrel. So... It is what it is. Do you have any recipes for bear? Um, for bear burgers, um, mix 50-50 with turkey burger, um, marinate it in soy sauce, and uh, orange Fanta soda, and then for about an hour, and then grill it. So, What are your preference for your 9mm hollow point reloads? Uh, 147 grain XTP. That's what I like. My bullet preference is uh, uh, one forty-seven grain XTP. Um, the lighter grain XTPs tend to sh shatter um, if you shoot them too fast. Uh, believe it or not, though, the ninety grain did actually do pretty good in my penetration, my redneck science penetration tests. So um, I did load up a bunch of ninety grains because when the when the ammo tank right after um, um, right after. Uh, uh, uh 2020 during 2020 during the covid stuff and the ammo tanked i bought all the i was like screw it it's a 90 grain bullet mix it with a full metal jacket underneath it and you'll have your penetration and your energy dump and just at one after one and uh so i did load up a bunch of 90 grain xtps that i have and they are a lot of fun um they will go through a lot so i'm gonna try them out of a 16 inch barrel i've got a 16 inch barrel uh uh, for the Glock 19, a matter of fact, uh, sent by Recover Tacticals, which is another affiliate link on my uh, MeWe page and stuff. So, yep. Yeah. Make sure you cook it all the way through, 165 degrees. Check this number. Don't rely on me. Yeah, because of trichinosis. Yeah, I think 170 is where you want to be for that. So, yep. I'll tell you what, Moose Burger's good. And the other thing you can do to kill the trichinosis just leave it in the freezer for three or four months that usually gets it too just so y'all know i mean that usually gets both of them so kind of is what it is excuse me for a second take a breather i've been under the weather a little bit appreciate everybody being here so that's that Anyway, we got 44 people in the chat. That's great. I don't know you're here if you don't say something. So, anyway, um, what do y'all think about that? Me putting my, my Arkin LPVO that came out today. In case you didn't see that video, I'm going to put the link in the chat here. Um, oh, I, I butcher my own meat. Um, 
And the reason why I, I butcher my own meat is because I have food allergies. So I, I don't eat, I don't need a lot of pork. I can have a little bit now and then I've worked that one back in, but I can't do any milk, any gluten, uh, any soy or any corn. And so, uh, well, there, you know, dairy free ice cream is the reason why I'm fat. I ain't, I ain't going to lie, but, uh, like I can't do any of those things without severe stomach issues. Um, broccoli, apples, a few other things I got to eat in moderation. Um, so anyway, um, like I have to butcher my own meat because people who send it, those processors, they mix some of that stuff in for the different sausages and stuff they make. So I butcher my own meat. So five shots are six. Good evening. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Brutal Bob. Good evening. Twisted your arm. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Didn't mean to twist your arm. You look like you could, uh, you know, just earn the name. You look like you beat me up. I went and twist your arm. So, anyway, let's do that. Don't forget Natchez Shooter Supply. They are sponsoring uh, a little bit of my uh, 308 reloading projects and then some stuff for it. So, um, it is what it is. Ever tried bearded butcher stuff? No, I don't know what that is. So. Yep. So. All right. Any other questions right here? Five shots are six. So. And if you haven't subscribed to some of the channels in here, like Bending Ballistics, he's got a few videos out. And where is he? Steve Montana Music. Musings Outdoor Channel. Go subscribe to all those guys, please. I think G23 has some videos out um let's see make sure you go subscribe to them appreciate it and if i if i missed you there we go would an lpvo work on a woods gone on a bolt or single shot rifle absolutely so lpvo started as woods guns um the one to four was a big concept on places like kodiak in africa where you could come around the corner and have to make you know a 300 yard shot across a field or you could, um, or you'd be coming across and, uh, you know, step around a corner, have to make a two yard shot on a grizzly bear or Cape Buffalo or something that was about to charge you. Uh, so yes, an LPVO would work for a woods gun. Uh, even if it's a single shot rifle. Yeah. You know, you know, obviously if you're carrying a single shot rifle, have you a revolver, uh, or a 10 millimeter semi-auto or something right next to you. But Yeah. Uh, 375 Ruger has had a little bit more ammo availability overall in the last three years. There was a while there where it was only 375 H and H, but I would go 375 Ruger out of all that. Um, it's going to punish your shoulder the le least. Get a good muzzle break, you'll be fine. So, going to save one of my pennies for one of those Arc and LPVOs if your long term review shows that it holds up. Yeah. Um, I don't expect it not to hold up, so uh, I definitely think it's a good scope. Um, I've never heard of any of them break. Uh, I think New York Prepper might have had one break. He had it on a 416 Ruger, I think, though, and he fired several hundred shots before it broke. And you're talking about a lot of recoil right there, 416 Ruger or 416 Rigby, elephant gun type of thing. So, you know, they say it's rated up to 50 BMG, so, um, yeah. But I think he just sent it back and they replaced it. Nicholas, thanks for stopping by, brother. Have a good night. You too. I know it's late on the East Coast and even later on, or in the middle of America, it's still late too and a lot of that. And with my SKS 7.62 by 39 hunting ammo recommendations, such as Full Metal Jacket or something else, I would find soft points. Um, several companies make soft points. It might be rare now. Um, but I would find soft points for, for deer hunting, uh, with, uh, SKS soft points, uh, get, uh, as many as you can buy and side them in. And, you know, especially if you live in the South where there's only 50 yards of deer hunting, you know, you're in big woods, you know, kind of is what it is. Savagely 10 PM here. So you must be in central time zone, brother. All right. Yep. Isn't Full Metal Jacket illegal to hunt with? Depends on what state you're in. 
But in general, yes. In general, most states, 44 Magnum is um, a little bit hard to hunt with, or a little illegal to hunt with. Uh, it's also not very ethical. You don't want you don't want an animal to suffer from a bullet that just goes right through uh, without doing any damage except for this hole. Uh, so you do want it something that'll open up a little bit. Tack. Oh, I'm going to have to look into this now. Tack and 55 grain full metal jacket can outperform factory M193 fairly easily. Yeah, that, I'm going to have to look this up now. Now I'm going to have to break it into my phone, look up some reloading da data, and see what we get uh, here. Thanks, thanks, Simon. Appreciate it. You know. Oh, let's see. Let's see. 223 Remington. 55 grain. Showing tack at 20. This is the Barnes manual. Showing tack at 25.4 grains to get 31.78. That is an outperform it yet. Yeah. Of course, those are rim, those are that bullet. Let me look at the Hornady. What has Hornady got here? Hornady manual's been crazy lately. We don't put any hot loads in it anymore. Now I, I gotta look this up, Simon. I'm sorry. So, are you pushing it past where it needs to go, or? Well, let me see here. 223 Remington. 55 grain. Full metal jacket. They're saying tack is just right at 3200. With BLC2, you could get 3300 in theory. So I would, uh, I like my BLC2. It's accurate in 223. That's one of my favorite. So that is what it is. Sorry about that. Look at the RAM shot data. I will look at the RAM shot data. I don't have that on my phone hand handily. So maybe I can just look it up real quick. Let's see what we got here. Um, Google. RAM shot. 0.223 load data. Let's try it. I don't, let's see. Okay. Handgun, handgun, handgun. Rifle. 222 Remington. 223 Remington Tech Max Load Velocity 55 Green Full Metal Jacket. All right, 3281. Yeah, no, you're right. Let's see what I'm like now. Now I'm very interested in this. Thank you, Simon. All I see around me is tumble upon impact solid copper rounds for the 7.62 by 39 millimeter. Uh, they should be effective, but I don't think they're legal because a lot of places say you have to use a bullet designed to expand. So, I have done the video on it, but I did not do accuracy. Um, but TAC with 130 grain TTSX was getting me 3150. And I was at 50.7 grains. So th there's a full video on that, Keith. Um, but yeah. I'm currently loading up bulk 150 grain 308 using BLC2. Cool. That's, that's a good one. I heard that uh, Federal Blue Box is a little bit of spear hot core. Hot core. Is that true? I don't think so. Yep. Yep, I'm working on some data that I can share. Okay. Yeah, let it let it let me know. Email me at, if you want to. Alaskan Ballistics at email, 
Ramshot.com. Now that I know that Ramshot has tech. Wow. Let's see. Even the 55 green there. All right. Tack looks good also in the like 62 grain M855 stuff. And in the heavier stuff, you can get some good loads like 69 grain stuff with Tack. Cool. Yeah. Tack powder is just amazing. Like, I like it. Now, it did not, it shot fast, but not very accurately, those one uh, M80A1s. So, is what it is. So. Anyway, so uh, what other what other powders have y'all tried with uh, 308? Uh, BLC2, Varget I've seen here, uh, 4064 IMR. I've tried a few different ones. Um, uh, H335 did not perform well for me. I did my uh, hand loads in H335, and it did not perform well. So, um the velocities were there. They were inconsistent. They were there. It was like high 2700s. And then um, and that was just for the full metal jackets. So. And I, I loaded up like two or 300 of, the, of those H335s. Those are my uh, share during. Uh, I'm going to share those during. Uh, crap hits the fan. Maybe somebody else's rifle down the street will like it better than mine. All right, brother. Uh, have a good night. Six five stay ball, stay ball six five for three oh eight. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a good powder. It's a pretty good powder. Um, Superformance kind of outperformed it for me in accuracy once I got the length of my uh, cartridges correct. But uh, it's a good powder. So I like stay ball six five. That's after I get this done. That's what I'm doing next is the six five project. I got to get a whole bunch of six five cream more loaded up um, for crap hits the fan. So um, I've got the bullets. I've got I think ten boxes of one twenty seven grain LRX that I've collected over the years, and I just got to load them up. So forty eight ninety five. Yeah, that'll get you uh, a lot of fast burning powder. So I'm surprised at how much velocity I get out of tack. And it's not, it's not slow burning, but it's not all that fast burning either, comparatively. It just works. So, yeah. It just works. So, I like it. Should I start with the book, The Beginner's Guide to Reloading Ammunition? Yeah. But the best way, if you're like me, is to find somebody who will teach you. Find somebody who will teach you. So, that's the best way. And it's not me because my reloading be bench is a mess. I'm not letting you see how messy it is and going and telling the world. So, yeah, Varget has been my go to for so long. Very accurate with good velocity. Lots of new powders to try these days. Yeah, I've just never tried Varget. So, in the calibers I've wanted to load it, it's never given me the velocity I've wanted. So, yeah, um, just never given me the velocity that I wanted. So, kind of is what it is. Well, guys, I hate to cut this short, but I'm a little bit, a uh, little bit under the weather. Don't feel good still. Um, need to get some sleep. Need to play with my kids. Need to eat some dinner. So I am going to end our chat a little early tonight. Sorry for that. But guys, uh, just uh, you know, wish you all well and uh, Godspeed and good hunting to all y'all. Um, so let us know uh, if there's anything we can do for you and uh, any questions you have. Don't forget to go watch uh, today's video, which didn't uh, didn't do too well. So make sure you go watch it. And guys, uh, go over to our um, arms directory page, which is also in the top of the chat there. So guys, God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range. Yeah, Varget has always been a little slow, especially especially in six five Creedmoor. All right, guys, take talk to you later.